Well, you know, what we've been trying to do this week, I think to grow, you have to continue, continually evaluate where you are. You also have to evaluate what you need to do to get better, and that's really what we've been trying to do as coaches, to help each and every one of our players, each and every one of our groups on our team, uh, whether it's O-line, DBs, whatever it is, to um, try to evaluate themselves in terms of where they are and what we need to do to get better. And uh, everybody's been working really hard this week. Uh, I don't think there's a player on our team that you could really say, I played my best yet. So uh, that's what we always shoot for. That's what we're working for. That's probably what we need this week against a very good A&M team. Um, present a lot of challenges to you on both sides of the ball. Uh, some of them personnel issues, some of them scheme issues, but uh, the preparation has been good. And I think, you know, the challenges of playing on the road is starts with really good preparation. Uh, you got to have great focus in the game so that you can have discipline to execute. And when we've played that way, that's when we played our best. So, you know, that's the challenge that we have, regardless of what the circumstances are that we have to compete in. Uh, hot, cold, loud, whatever it is. So uh, that's going to be our challenge in this particular game. Start the middle with Cecil. Um, I have no oh, sorry. I have to coach. Uh, first, last couple of days of practice, uh, Blake Barnett's been out. Could you update us on him? Right. You know, Blake's just ill. Uh, I can't get into specifics of what's wrong with him, but he wasn't feeling well. Uh, decided to admit him to the hospital for some tests. Uh, they found out you know what the issue is he's out he's uh, we're very hopeful that he'll be fine uh, he probably won't be back to practice for another day or two which kind of puts him out this week um, but we, we don't think it's anything serious or anything that's a prolonged illness but um, we, 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 we took a lot of precaution to make sure he was okay thank you and on to the game you've talked through the year that there are some games where where some of the big guys up front defensively, Darren Payne or, or Jaron or Ashawn, may not get as many snaps as Texas A&M an offense that, that's going to maybe put other guys out there more of the time. Well, you know, they've tried to run the ball more effectively this year, uh, but I think that um, we are going to have to play more players. Uh, they're going to try to go fast. Uh, and I think that, you know, when they've got their four wideouts in the game, you've got to get as much speed on the field as you can. And, um, you know, that that's – what we'll probably try to do, which you still need to play a couple big guys inside because they can run the ball. Uh, you just need to have, you know, good athletes on the edges. Uh, the quarterback can scramble. The quarterback pulls the ball on the option. Uh, and you need the pass rush. So um, that being said, uh, it does create opportunities for more players to play. On the left side of Matt. Coach, my question is about Dalvin Tomlinson. Just how has Dalvin come along during the course of the last couple of years and even just from last season to this season? And what are some of the characteristics that he brings to the table that are unique along your defensive line? Well, I, I think, you know, first of all, you got to look at the person. You know, Dalvin has had to overcome a tremendous amount personally uh, as well as, you know, from a football career standpoint. He had two ACLs early in his career. I uh, didn't get to play much for a couple of years. Um, you know, has shown great character in how, how he's handled personal issues as well as injuries to get back and continue to improve and get better. Uh, but Dalvin is a guy that has enough explosive power to play the run, uh, but he's athletic enough to be a good pass rusher and finish on the quarterback. And, you know, he's one of those guys that's, you know, bats a lot of balls down and is very, very instinctive. So uh, he's played extremely well for us, and we consider him a starter, even though he doesn't start. Uh, we certainly consider him that way, and he plays uh, a, a huge role on the defensive front because of the diversity that he has as a player. You mentioned their run game a little bit, but what, what have you seen from Trey Carson and how much balance does he provide with that high-powered passing attack? Well, he, he, he's a little different style guy than what they've had in the past. You know, they've had a lot of fast guys, and not that he's not fast, but he is a bigger, uh, more powerful, you know, downhill runner, uh, which I think really complements, you know, the things that they do on the perimeter and the other perimeter players that they have. So um, he's a really good back. Um, you know, more kind of uh, along the lines of the kind of backs that we've had, you know, around here who can run through tackles and has some power and plays with some toughness, but he's still a very good receiver. 
J JK probably had his most consistent game last week. Is that just a byproduct of him kind of getting the drop down? Well, you know, that's what we're working on is, uh, you know, just um, focus on the process of what you got to do to make a good punt this time. You know, don't have a lot of anxiety about uh, worrying about the result of what you're doing, but the process of how to do it that particular time and hopefully you can duplicate it and develop consistency and he's actually been punting better in practice so you know we're, we're very confident that um, you know maybe he'll continue to develop the kind of consistency we're, we'd like to see. In the with, Alex. with Blake missing some time this week, have y'all made any dis determinations of whether or not he's going to redshirt this year or have you, have you said a line thing there? Well, I don't think missing two days of practice this week would really have anything to do with that. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're developing him as a player. Uh, and if we develop him to the point that we think he's going to give us the best chance to win somewhere down the road, then we'd probably play him. If that doesn't present itself, um, then we're certainly not interested in trying to waste a year if he's not going to play enough to help his development. Eddie Jackson seems like he's made the switch very well to playing safety. Now that we're kind of at the midway point of the season, how did that all go, and, and has it gone as well as it as it appears? Um, I love it when you guys ask me a question and answer it yourself, and then ask me for my opinion after you already gave yours. It really kind of there's nothing left to say. But I, 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 I like it. It's challenging. Um, no, Eddie's done a really good job for us. You know, I think that um, he was a little apprehensive at first, you know, to move only because it was out of his comfort zone and he hadn't done it for a long time and there was a lot of new things that he was going to have to learn. But uh, he's been very dedicated in his approach to trying to, you know, learn the position and do the things at the position that you need to do to play winning football. He's always been a very instinctive sort of playmaker kind of guy, even when he played corner. So uh, that's carried right over into safety. And uh, he has done a, a, a really good job for us. And, you know, we're not as big as we've been at safety, but um, the guys that we have playing safety now are athletic, have a little more range and speed. And uh, I think, you know, that, is, that has helped us against especially some of the kind of teams that we have to play that are more spread out. Last one in the back with Neil. Coach, two questions. Uh, take us back to how you helped uh, uh, walk-on linebacker Rowdy Harrell get a job with Dale Jr.'s uh, pit crew, and um, and what quality did you see in him that would make him good, carry on into over into racing? Right. Well, I can't take any credit for you know Rowdy Har Harrell's success. You know, he was one of those guys here that was, you know, always uh, did everything that was best for the team. You know, really worked hard. Uh, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for some of the guys that walk on and stay here and stick it out for four years. And the best they ever get is, you know, maybe a little bit of dressing for games. And um, but it really is important to them to be a part of the team. And then you know, go out there and do a really good job every day speaks volumes of a guy's character. And uh, he always worked hard here. He was an overachiever in terms of uh, always giving his best to try to be the best. So for him to have success at anything he chose to do is not surprising to me at all. And we're always happy to see, you know, our players do well. And um, we wish him well and, and, you know, would love to have him back in this organization. Thanks, Coach.